for stopping by, everybody. Level in that cast. We do have Hitch and Toe on tap for today from Greenlight. This is Series 31, one of the longer-running product lines that uh, Greenlight has offered. Um, shockingly, it doesn't seem to be old. It seems to be relatively good each each uh, release. We're going to kick it off with this one right here. 1961 Nissan Patrol Hardtop and the Utility Trailer. <clears throat> I've mentioned this before. There's always one set in here has to be like the budget set, you know, the least amount of pieces, the least amount of stuff to it, I guess you can say. So this is definitely going to be that one. This one is going to be the quote-unquote budget set. <clears throat> Just because, you know, it's got the it's got the least involved trailer and one of the, I guess, less involved trucks, if you want to put it that way. So we'll get this out of here. Just like that. Get the clamshell out of here. They are held in here with uh, a little piece of plastic to hold the models in there. So we'll drop the trailer out, drop the vehicle out, pop that out. We will put one of these in, um, but uh, the rest of them we'll just leave because uh, these are very time consuming. Sometimes they don't work. But I do like to showcase those uh, at least once. So we'll just go ahead and do that right away. These are um, plastic. You can see it does flex, unfortunately. But sometimes the plastic makes it a little bit easier to get in there. Um, not always, but sometimes. So you just kind of have to kind of force it in there a little bit, turn it, uh, be somewhat um, <clears throat> aware of it. So if it doesn't seem to be going in, don't force it because you will you will break it off uh, in there, being plastic or if it's metal. So goes in there just like that. You are supposed to be able to you know adjust the trailer height for it. Uh, I just put them in there once and leave it and just do it that way. The little ramp just uh, snaps in the back here on these two little, little pieces here. Be a little bit gentle with it. There is the trailer. It's uh, nothing particularly fancy. That is print for the wood paneling at the bottom. The red, or I'm sorry, the um, uh, over fenders in white are a separate piece. So the base of the trailer is metal, but this uh, little ramp piece is plastic. Um, but it does fold all the way down, used for motorcycles or something very, very small. <clears throat> this is our Nissan Patrol in dark blue, which looks pretty good. It does say Nissan Patrol on the side there. Um, this one actually has some pretty good set wheels. That's, uh, or, I'm sorry, tires. It's been a, an issue with this model because they're so thin. 945 is the number, so it's a pretty low number for this guy. A little bit of print for the exhaust. And then, of course, there is the uh, trailer hitch at the back. That is also uh, plastic. You can see it move a little bit, unfortunately. There is a plate on the back of this. Oh, look at that. It's a Colorado plate. What? That is super, super cool. That is super, super cool. What's the date on that? Ooh, get you to focus a little bit. 1960, maybe? Oh, that's crazy. That's crazy. There is a bunch of uh, super glue residue back here. Which can be somewhat cleaned up, as you can see. It, it's it's it happens. It's part of green light. That's that's so cool. That's so cool. It's a Colorado plate. This does have a removable top. The top just does pop off like that. A color match steering wheel. Very interesting to see that in there. But a couple benches on the side, and a bench for the front. Then just put the little top section back on there. It is uh, not exactly the uh, most uh, user friendly. You actually have to squeeze it a little bit and then push it down in order to get it to go in there but the uh, trailers do hitch on there you do have to be a little bit uh, flexible with getting them on there that is actually uh, a ball hitch by the way so it does hold on there but of course it looks just fine the appropriate size of it and all that good stuff like that full deets and stuff like on there. it looks it looks good it looks good it's pretty straightforward i'm just kind of taking back that it's got a colorado plate that's just cool all right, next one we're going to take a look at is 87 Chevy C20 in the LAPD mounted platoon. And then, of course, a horse trailer to go along with it. So, again, like I said, the first one was more of the budget one. Uh, the rest of these all have, like, multi-pieces for the trailers. Um, the models aren't particularly, like, extravagant. It's just more so the trailers, uh, especially the next one we'll take a look at. That one's got a whole bunch of pieces to it. There we go. We will get our models out of here, get the trailer out of there, and we will just leave the uh, stand in there. We won't worry about that. Moving forward, because you guys understand 
how it works. There is our C20. There is your LAPD logo on the side. Mounted platoon to protect and serve. Does have a unit number on there as well. Details on the back just says Chevrolet in there. Detail lights are printed up. I like that green light uses like a metallic red uh, versus just a regular red to uh, bring some, some detail to that. It does have gray bumpers to uh, maybe indicate the the base modelness of it. But I, I really like that. I like the gray color for the bumpers. It looks pretty good. They also have that color for the front end. There is full prints underneath that uh, brush guard in the front. You just can't see it because, of course, it's all hidden up. No prints on the top. The hood does not open. It's just a changeable piece based on the casting that they're using. So you cannot remove the hood or open it or anything like that. Just some black steelies on there. And then there is our base deeds. This one happens to be 2586, it looks like. So 2586 is the number for that guy. There is our horse trailer. There is your mounted division logo. Looks cool. I like the two-tone on it. There's also an LAPD on the front. Looks like that might match the truck number. So it does indeed match the truck number, which is pretty nice. A little bit of black print just on the very, very tip of the tongue. Uh, just to uh, give a little, little detail uh, to that. Unfortunately, there's a little bit of black uh, gotten onto the rest of the tongue. So unfortunately, they went for a good thing and then it just didn't work out. There is the prints in the back. LAPD on each side. It does have opening doors. There is a divider inside there. Looks pretty good. Just a basic uh, floor coloring there. No um, wood paneling texture or, or prints or anything like that. But the uh, left one closes first. And you close the right one on it. Sometimes they latch. Sometimes they don't. Here we go. It's about, it's about what they do. It's about the latching you're going to get. And then there is no number on the trailers, by the way. So, and a little bit of print on the top for some vents. As far as hooking it onto the truck. Now, here's one of the big problems about hitch and tow. Sorry about that. Ooh. See, there's a lot of casting flash on that hitch. So, it makes it a pain in the butt to actually get it hooked up. So, it does hook onto there. Obviously, we got it on there. The doors don't want to stay closed on the horse trailer. That's always been a problem of it. But... It rolls around just fine. You see both axles do roll. So it does sit perfectly level. There's nothing wrong with that. I always uh, always get mad at uh, trailers and stuff in die casts when they don't actually roll. Uh, Matchbox is notorious for doing something like that. All right, next one up. This is probably the most involved one of the set. 1978 Ford F-150 Ranger Explorer with the canoe and kayak trailer. We have seen this uh, many times. There's nothing new about this set as far as like castings go by the way in case you haven't already uh deemed it that thus far so we do have one more after this one to cover the four in the set so we'll get our uh explorer or ranger explorer out throwing the plastic out of here uh this one just has a lot of pieces with it so we'll be a little bit gentle with the trailer we'll get our uh, ranger explorer out and then of course the the Boats are just plastic, so we'll just push the boats out, the kayak, and the canoe. Set that to the side. More plastic. So this is the kayak and canoe trailer. Like I said, this is not a new casting. It's been around for a little bit. The spare tire on this one's not exactly placed on there very level. As you can see, that's okay. Not a big deal. The print on the side looks pretty good. Fake, fake wood paneling. Gives it a little bit of detail on there. The axle on this one is way off. Look at that. But that is uh, easily uh, rectified. Oof, it's got to be a little bit, little bit gentle with it. But, uh, oh, man. There we go. Much, much better. The covering does come off. Not that you'd ever put anything in this trailer, but you could if you wanted to. It is a pain in the butt to get that off, but it is uh, removable and open. All the base silver you see here is uh, metal. This top section here is plastic, the uh, racking, but uh, the rest of it is metal. The rest of the entire uh, trailer is metal. So get this top uh, slid back in there ever so gently. So it sits in there very, very nicely. There we go. And then just a little bit of taillight prints on the back. Nothing particularly fancy. Now the boats just barely sit on there. The first one is, of course, 
the canoe. There is your canoe. Just a little bit of print. It's just a big piece of uh, yellow plastic with a little bit of print on there. The canoe is actually pretty nice. It has a little bit of extra print on there. So a little bit of print down the, uh, the uh, spine of it here. Print around the top and then print around the top of the edge as well. And then a little bit of print down inside too where you'd sit down and all that good stuff like that. There's nothing fancy about the trailer. These don't click or hold into there in any way, shape, or form. So you just slide the canoe in on one side. Make sure the, the top doesn't come off there. And then, of course, the kayak just the kayak just sits on there. I've always hated the kayak. I would much rather than put two canoes in there rather than this kayak because it just it doesn't sit anywhere. You just you just sit it there. It doesn't do anything. Um, it doesn't hold in there. Just falls right off. The canoe will also fall off, but it, it just looks right. It looks like the way it's supposed to be. So it's a little bit rough. There is our Ranger Explorer. Of course, it says F-150 Ranger there on the side. The orange and yellow striping looks good. Those old school uh, steelies with the disc hub on there. Very interesting. Explorer on the back. Of course, it's got the standard um, you know, reinforced bumper in the back. It'd be, be uh, you know, with nothing all fancy like we get nowadays. Back in the day, trucks were a little bit more, not a little bit more, they were way more utilitarian. Nowadays, people drive them just to go to work. The casting is pretty good. This casting's kind of grown on me over the years. I like the details in the front. It says Ford. The prints in the front look very, very good. It's a very, very involved detail to get the headlights, the turn signals and everything, especially the lines correct in the grill. That looks very, very, very good. I'm really, really happy about that. The bed and the cab align pretty good as well. So just a teeny bit off, but it's not bad. And I like the stance. You know, the, the wheel sits just a little bit in the bed, uh, which is very, very realistic, very accurate. looks good. There is your base deets. This one looks to be about 4883, so a pretty high number for this one. See, it's got all these extra holes in there. They do use this casting for monster trucks as well. Man, the wheel placement on most of these models are just, just rough. They're relatively easy to fix because the wheels are just pressed onto the axle, but uh, still kind of a pain in the butt. So as far as uh, getting the trailer on there, so we will get the... That one goes on there very, very, very easily. So that looks decent. I don't, I'm not a huge fan of the pairing because it's a very, very modern trailer, very, very classic truck. I just don't, I don't feel like the, the, the match goes together, but at the same time, you know, it could be just in somebody who's had an old truck in the family. They go canoeing or doing something like that. So we get a new one. There you go. All right. <clears throat> Moving on to the last one, which is probably the heavy hitter of the set, at least in my opinion. Uh, 1991 Dodge Ram Power Ram 250. And, of course, the heavy-duty car hauler. Um, again, not particularly uh, involved with the castings, but this trailer has a lot of like extra little bits and pieces added onto it. Um, not to mention it's the biggest trailer uh, in the mix by a long shot. So we haven't seen the car hauler, the heavy duty hauler trailer for quite a bit, uh, to be honest with you. We haven't seen that, that casting for quite a bit. So we'll get that out of there. We'll get our Power Ram 250. And then of course, popping out the ramps. And then of course, we're gonna leave the uh, trailer jack in there for now. So this is the heavy duty car hauler trailer. There is a built-in winch on the top. It does have some lighting as well. There's a, a bar up at the front. Plus a small toolbox as well, right on the tongue, and a spare tire integrated as well. Sorry about the focus. There is some print on the top for tie downs and things like that. The black you see in the center is plastic, but the entire rest of the trailer is metal. So it is a big, uh, kind of heavy duty deal. The <clears throat> integrated jack stands in the back to theoretically keep the trailer level. Um, they are there, but they don't function. They don't do anything. You can't move them or anything. They're fixed. And then, of course, the ramps uh, just add on to the back. These ones are very uh, precarious. So you got to kind of work them in there. And then once they, once they get in there, you just you got to be really, really gentle. I've broken so many of these ramps. Um, you just got to be very, very careful. Sometimes... Sometimes they just they just don't want to go in there uh, all the way, and it's mainly due to the 
a molding of the ramp itself, not the trailer. So this one is, oof, Get that snapped on there. So that one goes on there just fine. That one does stand up just like it's supposed to. This one is being a little bit more difficult. So you gotta make sure you push, push the plastic part down. Sorry about that. In the in the bottom here, and then kind of wiggle the trailer up at the same time or the ramp up. There you go, because it just doesn't want to sneak behind the uh, metal bar that's there. So, but it does have some reflective tape and stuff like that. It does have some tail lights on the back. It looks pretty good as a, a full-on trailer. I do like the fact it's got a little bit of red print for the uh, over uh, fenders there, which just has a little bit of a little bit of change up to it. And then there is our Power Ram 250. There you go. It says Power Ram 250 on the side. A little bit of lifted version. Uh, silver. Actually, it's just gray. It's not even silver. It's just gray. Gray and red. Two-tone. Looks very, very good. Prints on the front look fantastic. It says Dodge on the grill. This one's really, really, really nice. This is a really, really nice version. Looks excellent. A little bit of, little bit of stuff on the hood. Get that off of there. Print on the back look good, says Dodge. Tail lights look good. I like the fact that this model doesn't have a bunch of lens lights because it just makes it look way, way, way better. Even the trailer hitch looks pretty good on this particular one. It is still plastic, unfortunately, though. There is the base Dietz. See if this guy is a number. Got to be a number on there somewhere, right? Might be the only one that's not numbered. Oh, there it is, 7258. That is a very high number, but uh, like I said, I like to show that on there just in case. So we will get this on the ball. So this one looks pretty good too. See, this one also does, you know, pull pull both uh, axles to the ground, stuff like that. I think appropriately size-wise, it looks pretty good as well. Get this guy kind of put back a little bit. This one over there. It looks pretty good. This looks pretty good. So, there you go. That is Hitch and Toe, uh, series number 31 from Greenlight. Um, I wasn't really going to continue to do trailers, but uh, it's a pretty good release. This is a pretty good release. Like I said, it, it doesn't feel old. It still doesn't feel old. Even after 31 releases, everything still feels pretty good. Um, and then, you know, dropping in a, a new casting here or there also helps as well. But uh, they, they definitely need some new trailers. They definitely need some new trailers. So, anyways, we're going to roll out. Appreciate you guys. Thank you very much. Don't forget to subscribe. Come back for more diecast action. As always, Leveloom Diecast.